Hello everyone, I'm Joey and I hope you will enjoy this presentation prepared by my group. Today, my groupmates and I will be explaining an experiment about photosynthesis and floating leaf disks. Introduction and biological concept will be explained by me, while hypothesis, objectives, material, and variables will be explained by Joshua. Procedure will be explained by Lowena, and finally, Ivan will be explaining the data collection, conclusion, and references about this experiment. Now, let's get started with the introduction of this experiment. For this experiment, my groupmates and I will be using leaf discs that are punched from spinach leaves. Many of you may be curious whether the small leaf disc can carry out photosynthesis like the leaf which is usually slightly bigger in size? The answer is yes. All organelles like chlorophyll which is essential for photosynthesis are present in the leaf disc. Hence, photosynthesis can be carried out by the leaf disc. Initially, when the leaf disc and the solution is being poured into a beaker, the leaf disc will float in the solution because of the air in the spaces between the cells of the leaf disc. However, we will need the leaf disc to sink to the bottom of the beaker. How and why are we going to do that? During this experiment, there will be air bubbles forming around the leaf disc and the leaf disc will float again. Why do this happen? All these questions above will be explained by the speakers later on. Now, let's proceed to the biological concept of this experiment. I believe most of you is aware about what photosynthesis is. Yet, do you know why photosynthesis is important for all organisms? Laura Brenner once stated in 2019, photosynthesis is the main source to produce oxygen in atmosphere. Plants use sunlight, water and carbon dioxide from the atmospheric air to produce energy in the form of glucose molecules that will be stored in the plants. Oxygen gas will also be produced as a byproduct. Hence, photosynthesis has to be carried out to ensure the earth has an oxygen-rich atmosphere for all organisms to live. It is true that photosynthesis is vital for all organisms to survive. With this, we are led to the next question. How does photosynthesis and cellular respiration relate to each other? According to Liz Velos in year 2017, photosynthesis and cellular respiration is related such that the products of one system are the reactants of the other system. And this enables cells to produce and store energy and helps to regulate the concentration of carbon dioxide and oxygen in the atmosphere. Let's have a look at this diagram. To carry out cellular respiration, the glucose produced from photosynthesis is broken down through three stages to produce energy. As you can see, Oxygen is involved in the process while water and carbon dioxide is produced as byproduct into the atmosphere. The carbon dioxide and water that are produced in the atmospheric air is then being used for the process of photosynthesis in plants. Thus, atmospheric concentration of carbon dioxide and oxygen gas is regulated by the cycle as shown in the diagram. Now, let's have Joshua to continue with the hypothesis of this experiment. Hi, I'm Joshua. So, I'll continue the presentation with the hypothesis in this experiment. The hypothesis in this experiment is, when the leaf disc is exposed directly under the sunlight, the number of leaf discs floating in 2 minutes time interval will be higher as compared to the artificial light source. However, when the leaf disc is covered with aluminium foil, the leaf will not float. Objectives The objectives in this experiment is to determine the rate of photosynthesis with different light intensity. How can we determine the rate of photosynthesis in this experiment? We can determine it by observing the number of leaf discs floating in 2 minutes time intervals. It is because the buoyancy of the leaf is actually an indirect measurement of the net rate of photosynthesis occurring in the leaf tissues. 
We are also going to use different light intensity in this experiment, such as directly under the afternoon sunlight, directly under the lamp, and finally, no light source. Materials. There are several materials that we are going to prepare for this experiment. Syringe, beaker, hole puncher, tweezers, stopwatch, liquid dishwasher, baking soda, spinach leaves, dex lamp, distilled water, and aluminum foil. Let's move on to the variables. The manipulated variables in this experiment is the different light intensity. The constant variables are the size of leaf leaks and the type of solution used. The responding variables in this experiment will be the number of leaf ticks floating in 2 minutes time intervals. Now, let's see one of the other experiments that is similar to our experiment. The title of this similar experiment is called The Relationship Between Different Light Intensity and the Amount of Oxygen Gas Produced. The manipulated variables in this similar experiment is same as our experiment, that is, the different light intensity. But there are differences on the constant variables and the responding variables between our experiments and this similar experiment. The constant variables in this experiment is the temperature of water. And the responding variables in this experiment is the amount of oxygen gas produced. Although there are similarities and differences between these two experiments, but both of the experiments actually carry out the same objectives, which is to determine the rate of photosynthesis with different light intensity. Now, I will let my teammates Lowena to proceed the presentation with the procedure in these experiments. Hi, I'm Lowena and I'll be presenting the procedure of this experiment. To start this experiment, we'll have to make a 0.5% of baking powder solution by mixing 0.5 gram of baking powder with 500 ml of distilled water. Then, add a few drops of liquid dishwasher and mix gently. Why do we need to put liquid dishwasher into the baking powder solution? This is to wash away the wax on the leaf disc and avoid water repellent in the leaf disc. Test the syringe by sealing the tip and pulling back on the plunger. Why? This is to indicate a good vacuum medium. Put the leaf disc into the syringe and reinsert the plunger of the syringe carefully. Make sure the leaf discs are not crushed. Draw a small amount of baking powder solution and liquid dishwasher into the syringe. Hold the syringe vertically with the tip pointed upwards and expel the air by gently pushing the plunger. Close the tip of the syringe with finger and pull the plunger to create a vacuum medium. The plunger is held in place for 10 seconds and release. Repeat this step for 3 times. The leaf disc will sink to the bottom because the air in the leaf disc is forced out and replaced with the solution when a great vacuum is applied. Use tweezer to transfer 10 leaf discs to each beaker with baking powder solution and liquid dishwasher until it is enough to cover the leaf disc. Beaker air will be placed under the sunlight. 
Beetle B will be placed directly under the lamp. Beetle C will be covered with aluminium foil. Stopwatch is start immediately. After all the beaker are placed, the number of floating leaf discs will be recorded in 2 minute intervals. The experiment will be continued until all leaf discs float. All results will be recorded and tabulated. Hello, this is Ivan, and I will be explaining about the result of our experiment. The first leaf disc of each beaker will float at 4 minutes respectively. It will take a minutes for half of the leaf leaves in beaker A and beaker B to flow. Beaker A takes 12 minutes to have all the leaf leaves to flow. As for the beaker that is covered by the aluminium foil, which is beaker C, all of the leaf leaves is sink. This is because there is no photosynthesis can occur without light energy. Hence, there is no oxygen is produced. During the experiment, we can see there is the air bubbles forming around the leaf leaves. Why do that happen? It is because the oxygen is produced during the photosynthesis. The oxygen will come up from the solution and infiltrate the deep dish, replacing some of the water. Some of you might be curious why the deep dish still can float even when the wax which allows the deep dish to float has been washed away by the liquid dishwasher. This is because the production of oxygen during photosynthesis decreases the deep dish density and causing the deep dish to eventually flow. Thus, based on the result of our experiment, we can conclude that light intensity will definitely affect the rate of photosynthesis. The greater the light intensity, the higher the rate of photosynthesis. Thank you. Last but not least, we are going to look for the reference part. As we can see in the reference list, the first reference and the second reference are cited in slide 10 and slide 13. Next, for the reference tree, is cited in the slide 19. That's all from me. Thank you. Hi, it's Joey again. Now, I will be concluding for our group's presentation today. I hope that you have learned something through our presentation. For instance, I hope that you have a better understanding about the relationship between photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Besides, based on the information in our experiment, we can see that light intensity has a major impact on the rate of photosynthesis of plants. Plants carry out more photosynthesis in stronger light intensity, resulting in the floating leaf disc and the number of air bubbles formed, showing us the production of oxygen during photosynthesis process. However, when floating leaf discs is put in a dark treatment, they will eventually sink. One of the reasons is no photosynthesis can occur without light energy. Hence, no more oxygen can be produced causing the leaf discs to sink. Nevertheless, cellular respiration will still continue in the dark. Leaf this will use the accumulated oxygen which is produced during the photosynthesis process when it is put in the dark treatment. So, this is the end of our group's presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you and bye-bye.